Welcome to our Easter Sunday service. Um, you can download the service bulletin um, on nativityonthehill.org. Our offertory hymn is The Strikers or in 200. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and peace, peace to his people on earth. Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again I will build you, and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again you shall take your tambourines and go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again you shall plant vineyards on the mountains of Samaria. The planters shall plant shall enjoy the fruit. And there shall be a day when sentinels will call in the hill, hill country of Ephraim, Come, let us go up to Zion, to the Lord our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 118. It is found on, in the prayer book on page 700. And 60. We'll read the first two verses and then begin again at verse 14. Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2, 14 through 24. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exaltation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But do not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me, and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted, and we will rejoice and be glad in him. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism of John and Alan. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all they did in both Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead, he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who is pleased in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guard shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord of Christ. We gather today to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Alleluia. Alleluia. We hear again the story of how Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, likely Mary the wife of Clopas, or maybe Mary the mother of James and John, went to the tomb and had a vision of the angel who told them, do not be afraid. Do not. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he's been raised from the dead, and indeed he's going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. These women were the first witnesses to the miraculous hope of resurrection, the amazing joy that the risen Christ brings. Alleluia. On Easter Sunday, all of us join the Marys in witnessing resurrection. We're part of this story that has come to us through the ages. We are the disciples, men and women, who trust in God's greatness in God's triumph, in God's continuous, creative work of bringing justice and freedom, healing and reconciliation, presence and grace to every person everywhere. As we participate in this worship service, we are doing the active work of witnessing. When we count ourselves in the crowd of witnesses to God's glorious, triumphant work in the world, the Holy Scriptures today offer us some very specific messages from God. Let's start with the witnesses of the Hebrew Bible. Long before Jesus, the prophet Jeremiah heard the voice of God reminding him that people who survived war found grace in the wilderness. When Israel, God's people, needed rest, God spoke to them. God remained faithful to God's people with an everlasting love. God rebuilt Israel and promised singing and dancing plentiful fruit from the harvest. Jeremiah is a prophet, was a prophet at a terrible moment in history, 650 to 570 BC. 
He witnessed the destruction of the temple and of Jerusalem, and he was tormented by a community that had lost its faith. But he hears the word of God speaking, reminding him of God's saving work in the past and promising joy and plenty in spite of the terrible time that he is living. Let us stand with Jeremiah and be a witness. God has saved God's people. God will bring joy and plenty. King David is purported to have written Psalm 118. He's another witness to God's greatness. Like Jeremiah, David lived during a terrible time of wars and harsh punishments, personal tragedies, and treasons. David was a soldier in King Saul's army in the war against the Philistines. He witnessed terrible deaths. Even as he had success in battle, David was exiled by Saul. After Saul died, he became king. But David had a personal tragedy when his first son with Bathsheba died. His son Absalom fought with David, and David ultimately had him killed. But he mourned his son's death. In spite of the violence and death that David witnessed, he maintains hope in God's deliverance. In Psalm 118, David seems to recognize that he has been part of the sin, the violence, the injustice of his time, and he writes, God has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. And as he recognizes his own faults, and God's punishment, he is also a witness to God's mercy. Let Israel now proclaim his mercy endures forever. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. While some Christians read the chief cornerstone as a prediction of Jesus' coming reign, we can also hear David's witness that he was the one God punished and now the one God has made king of Israel. David is flawed, but he witnesses God's mercy and proclaims the possibility of a coming righteousness, becoming part of God's salvation plan bring justice, not violence. Let us stand with David and witness. God's mercy is always available to us when we sin. God will open for us a way of justice. And to God we offer our thanks. In our passage from Luke's Acts of the Apostles, we hear Peter's witness to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. God accepts people from every nation. He witnesses to Jesus' ministry in Judea and Jerusalem. Peter retells the story of Jesus' death and resurrection, saying, we were chosen by God to be witnesses. The author of Luke and Peter in the story point to Jesus' example and teaching and to Jesus' role as the judge of the living and the dead, the one who triumphed over death by resurrection to bring forgiveness to God's people, to bring God's justice to the world. Peter names the crucifixion as the worst of what the world offers, an unjust trial, an oppressive regime, a violent death, but Jesus triumphs, rises from death to bring forgiveness and justice to all. Today we share in the Eucharistic feast, Peter names us as chosen witnesses, 
since we are the ones who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. With Peter, let us stand and witness the injustice in the world and the forgiveness and promise of justice that comes through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And finally, let us go with the Marys to the tomb. The shock, the great earthquake, the appearance of an angel like lightning, the inexplicable emptiness of the tomb gives rise to the truth, he is risen. They hear the words of the angels, but then they have an experience of meeting Jesus on the road and hearing him reassure them, do not be afraid. Jesus speaks to us today with those words, do not be afraid, go and tell the others, go to Galilee, there they will see me. Today, this Easter morning, we like the Marys are afraid we're mourning deaths of people we love and people we're hearing about on the news. But like an earthquake, like a lightning bolt, we can see the risen Christ clearly. God has broken through death, broken through pandemic, and risen in our midst. God's promises are trustworthy. God is making things new and right. God is changing the world and bringing new life to everyone. This resurrection hope came to the Marys so long ago, but this morning here it comes to us. It is a hope that can only come from God. We don't get true hope from the news or our government leaders, from doctors or infectious disease experts. We put our trust in Jesus Christ. We are transformed by the Easter experience. We joined Christ in our baptisms. We are witnesses to the resurrection through the Holy Eucharist. And now we hear Jesus speaking. Go out and tell the others. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. say together the Nicene Creed found on page 350. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of all, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form four, found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Form four on page 300. In response to the words, Lord, have mercy, we will say, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Give us a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours, remembering especially Walton James, Alan Sigmund, Catherine Christian, Ed Bates, Daniel Rose, Marco Ford, Nancy Schulte, John Yankovic, Ruth Halova, Thomas Klinger, Marge Pappas, Mary O'Dell, Mary P, Jim Gregg, Howe, Jake Nelson, Darius Brubeck, Joe Breggy, and Doug Romano, and grant that we may see serve Christ in them, and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, remembering especially our parish members, Ruth, Carissa, Margie, Juliet, Mary, Myrna, Phil, Dan, Sybil, Donna, Nancy, and Jim Goss. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We command your mercy all who have died. Remembering especially Rick Tullis and Bud Donaldson, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, wherewith the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And also with you. So glad you could join us at this service today. Um, we are about to share in the Holy Eucharist. And uh, for those of you who are watching this um, at home, if you would like to bring your own bread and juice or wine um, to the service, you may raise your bread and wine. And when I invoke the presence of the Holy Spirit, know that your bread and wine are consecrated. As an alternative, know that when you come to this communion, you bring your intention to enter into a covenant with God. And the communion is complete by that intention. Paradoxically, today, as we refuse to meet together in the face of the pandemic, we are making a commitment, a promise, to keep our community and our own health the safety of the world, the justice, the healing, this is what Christ died for. Through our virtual Eucharist, we're renewing our covenant with God and each other, and by doing so in the presence of this virtual ritual, we are indeed becoming one with God. Through Christ, let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. But do not neglect to do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, for he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God, God of power and might, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you. God and maker of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption. Almighty God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be to your people the body and blood of your Son the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are boldly to say, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
In thanksgiving, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. And grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom, in the Redeemer bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. a couple of announcements immediately after the service. We will uh, join on a Zoom coffee hour. You'll find the link on nativityonthehill.org, our webpage. And we welcome you to participate in some fellowship on this beautiful Easter Sunday. I um, also want to say together a beautiful prayer for birthdays and anniversaries. I know that this week we are celebrating the 60th wedding anniversary of Dick and Jean Heine. Join me together in our birthday prayer. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants Dick and Jean as they begin the loving year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll conclude with, He is risen, He is risen, recessional hymn 180, and much thanks to Dylan Snodgrass, our music director, for coming and recording these beautiful hymns on the organ.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.